There is no way out for these two sisters who were vacationing in Mexico after one of them broke up with her boyfriend. What started as a simple and daring trip to observe sharks in a cage has turned into a nightmare, as the two are now trapped in a cage 47 meters down. Their oxygen is running low, and they have less than an hour to figure out how to get back to the surface. And not to mention, they are surrounded by numerous great white sharks. Let's dive into this recap. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2017 movie 47 Meters Down. It's time to recall, let's get started, turn on subtitles, and spoilers ahead. The movie begins with two sisters, Lisa and Kate, who are on a vacation in Mexico. Kate plays a prank on Lisa, who's lounging on a float in the swimming pool, making her fall into the pool and spill her drink. The two of them laugh and Lisa leaves, saying that she promised Stuart, her boyfriend, that she will give him a call. Later, while they're having lunch in the room, Kate thanks her sister for bringing her on this vacation and that Stuart is missing out on it. Lisa nods, smiling, but we can tell that it is forced. That night, Kate wakes up to see that Lisa is not in her bed. She goes looking for her and finds her crying on the balcony. Kate asks her what's wrong and Lisa admits to having lied. Kate looks at her in confusion and Lisa goes on to say that the reason Stuart is not on this trip is that he left her. Kate is sorry to hear this and asks Lisa why she didn't tell her before, and Lisa admits that she was too embarrassed. She also says that she thought if she came up on this trip, Stuart would see how funny she is and maybe return, which is basically the reason he gave her for breaking up with her. Kate is indignant upon finding this out and takes Lisa to a club to cheer her up. There, the sisters meet Louis and Benjamin and hang out with them, having a great time. They are out drinking and dancing on the beach till dawn, and Lisa exclaims that this was the best night of her life. We later see that when Kate is asleep, Lisa texts Stuart, who says he's glad she's having fun and that he's cleared out his stuff from the apartment. That night, the girls hang out with Louis and Benjamin again, who tell them how they go diving in a cage to see great white sharks. They offer to take the girls along with them, but after hearing about the 25-foot-long shark, Lisa does not want to go. Kate eventually persuades Lisa to tag along, saying that the photos they'll take won't be the type of photos that a boring person takes. And hearing this, Lisa laughs and agrees. After dinner, Louis and Benjamin walk Lisa and Kate back to the room. Kate kisses Louis, but when Benjamin leans in to kiss Lisa, she backs away, telling him that she's not ready. As Benjamin leaves, Lisa tells him to wait as she runs up to kiss him, trying to embrace her fun side. The next morning, the gang meets up on the beach before Lewis and Benjamin take the sisters to meet Taylor, who is the captain of an old boat. Lisa again tells Kate that she feels uneasy about the whole thing, that she's read about tourists going on these shady trips and that their concierge had told them to book all activities through the hotel. Kate says that the concierge was bound to say that and it'll be okay and they'll have fun. They're introduced to Taylor, who asks them if they've dived before and the sisters lie, saying that they're pretty experienced. In reality, Kate has had one diving lesson and Lisa is a total newbie. They get into the speedboat to make their way to Taylor's bigger one. Taylor's boat is pretty dingy looking and when Lisa gets on board, she notices how rusty the cage is and that it doesn't seem safe at all. Kate yet again tells her not to worry and that they'll have fun. As Kate and Lisa look around the beautiful blue water, Javier shows them some fish bits swimming in blood. They're all disgusted by it and Javier laughs, upturning the bucket full of blood into the ocean. Kate mentions to Louis that she thought chumming the water was illegal and Javier mocks her, saying how else are they supposed to attract the sharks? They wait for the sharks to arrive and soon enough, Kate spots shark fins, which announces the arrival of the deadly hunters. But when Kate turns around to share her excitement with Lisa, she's not there. Kate finds her throwing up in the bathroom and Lisa apologizes, saying that she can't do this. Kate assures her that they will be completely safe and that she'll snap a picture of Lisa with sharks so that her ex can see how fun she is. This again pushes Lisa to agree and the two walk out to see Benjamin and Lewis getting into the cage and lowered down. While the guys are down under, Kate and Lisa get changed into their diving suits and Taylor gets them ready. He calms down a nervous Lisa and walks her through checking her gear. He tells her to make sure her oxygen level is 200 and when it reaches 100, they're to let him know through the mic in their masks. When the oxygen level reaches 50, he'll get them out. Lisa nods, trying to act like she knows everything. Taylor then mentions that they'll only be submerged 5 meters, but if she gets any pain in her ears, she can equalize. Lisa looks at him cluelessly until Kate reminds her that equalize means to tilt back your head and swallow. Finally, Taylor reminds her that the faster she breathes, the faster she uses up her oxygen. Everything seems pretty straightforward and soon the guys resurface and it's time for Kate and Lisa to get into the cage. 
Kate asks for a camera to take pictures with, and with that, they jump into the water. They're only a few feet deep, and the white sharks soon begin to circle them. The girls take in the exhilarating sights of the sharks and snap some pictures. Unfortunately, the camera slips and falls down through the bars of the cage and into the ocean below. Kate and Lisa try to retrieve it but soon laugh at the accident and continue to take in the sights around them. Things now start to go wrong as the cage slips deeper into the water. Lisa looks around in fear and immediately contacts Taylor, asking him to pull them up. Taylor starts to do so, but in an unfortunate series of events, the crane holding up the cage snaps and falls into the sea. This plunges the cage 47 meters down until the cage rests on the ocean floor. The broken crane follows the cage and ends up on top of it, blocking the door. The girls are unconscious after their fall and Lisa has gotten injured, which means she bleeds into the water, which means they're shark bait. Both of them soon regain consciousness and Lisa starts to freak out. They try to get out and then Kate tries to calm her sister, telling her that the more she panics, the faster they use up their oxygen, which is vital for their survival. They need to start thinking logically about how they can escape. Due to the depth, they are unable to communicate with the boat too and Kate decides to swim up a little to be able to contact Taylor. But first, they need to open up the cage, which is being blocked by the crane. The sisters both strain against the weight, but the door only opens a little way. Kate then decides to slip out of the narrow opening after taking off her oxygen tank, which is risky but essential. Kate takes off the tank and begins to swim out, but the opening is too narrow and her mask won't let her fully out, so she takes that off too and successfully escapes the cage. After putting on the mask again, Kate pushes the crane off the cage and manages to clear it away. She then swims up a few feet in order to catch the signal and is able to contact Taylor. The boat captain tells her to return to the safety of the cage immediately as the sharks are circling the area and that he will send Javier down to help them up to the surface. Kate heeds his advice and swims back down. After waiting a while, they hear the sound of an engine and worry that Taylor is leaving them behind. Kate leaves the cage a second time in order to contact Taylor, but a shark finds her. Kate hurriedly swims back with the shark in tow, but makes her way safely into the cage. Not knowing what to do next, the girls wait and realize that Kate's oxygen meter only shows 30 bars, whereas Lisa's still has up to 80 bars of oxygen. They then notice a flashlight in the distance and hope is revived as they believe it must be Javier coming to the rescue with the cable wire, but they realize that the flashlight is turning away from them. They scream and make a racket, even banging the bars with a rock to attract Javier's attention, but the flashlight moves away. This time it is Lisa who braves the open water and goes after Javier because Kate's oxygen is much lower than hers. She follows the direction of where they last saw the flashlight. However, a shark comes after her and Lisa manages to hide between a rock crevice in the nick of time. After the shark leaves, Lisa continues on her way and finds the flashlight alone. Before she can think of anything, Javier's dead body floats into view and she screams. Their savior has now turned into shark food and they're on their own. Lisa has the presence of mind to unhook the cable from his belt before making her way back along with a spear gun. Kate helps her back and Lisa attaches the cable to the top of the cage. She swims up and tells Taylor that she has secured the cable to the cage and that Javier was killed. He tells her to get back to the cage. Lisa swims back to Kate and Taylor begins raising them up to the surface. They get about 20 meters from the surface when the steel cable frays and then snaps, sending the cage back to the ocean floor. When the cage lands, it pins Lisa's leg, trapping her. Noticing that she's running low on air in her tank, Kate swims back up to let Taylor know. He tells her that he is going to send another oxygen tank down to them. He also warns Kate that their risk of experiencing nitrogen narcosis will be much higher once they use the second tank of oxygen and that they should watch each other closely for hallucinations. Kate sees the tank coming down and goes out to get it. A bag is attached to the tank with some flares. Kate gets the tank and is coming back to the cage when she spots a shark. She hides by some rocks and waits for it to leave. It swims by her, but due to how dark it is in the water, Kate and Lisa lose sight of it. Assuming it's gone, Kate decides to make a break for the cage. As soon as she does, the shark appears, attacking her. She drops the tank which lands near the cage. Lisa screams out for her fallen sister and grieves for her, but soon gets a hold of herself. She sees a spear gun which was also attached to the tank. She reaches out for it, but the trigger rubs against the part of the cage and accidentally shoots Lisa in the hand, drawing blood. Lisa screams in pain and begins looking at her wound. She then uses the spear gun to get a hold of the oxygen tank and plugs it in. As she breathes in, she soon hears Kate's voice calling out to her. Overjoyed to hear that she's alive, Lisa revives. Kate tells her that she's too injured to swim back and Lisa decides to save her. 
With a huge effort, Lisa gets her leg free from under the cage and leaves. She finds Kate and the two decide to make their way up to the surface on their own as there is now only one tank left. Lisa supports her sister and they begin to swim upwards. Soon they're in range to hear Taylor and tell him that they're coming up. Taylor tells them to go for it but warns them to swim up slowly as the nitrogen narcosis could prove to be fatal if they get out of the water too quickly. Listening to Taylor, the sisters both try to swim up slowly. On their way, they use a flare to ward off a shark that surrounds them, which works and it soon leaves. Taylor then instructs them to wait five minutes in the water to decompress. Their current flare soon runs out and Kate tries to light another one but drops it. Lisa grabs the last flare but upon lighting it, they discover they're surrounded by sharks. They try to fend them off with the flare but they're outnumbered. Finally, Lisa and Kate take off their masks and tanks and swim directly up. They soon reach the surface and everyone on the boat begins to help them out but a shark bites Lisa's leg, dragging her down into the water. Lisa struggles, but determined not to die this close to freedom, she attacks the shark. Using her fingers, she digs them into the shark's eye until the shark lets her go. She is rescued and climbs up on top of the boat, where Kate is lying on her back, safe and sound. The two of them begin laughing hysterically, but soon Lisa notices that the blood from her hand is blowing away into the wind, rather than dripping down. Lisa starts to hear Taylor's voice and it is revealed that Lisa is still pinned down to the bottom of the ocean and everything that happened after she switched to the new tank was a hallucination. Kate is truly dead and Lisa never made it out of the cage. On the radio, Taylor tells her that she is hallucinating but that the Coast Guard is there and they are coming down to help her. Lisa sees the Coast Guard coming down to help free her and keeps saying Kate's name as she searches their faces. As they help her out of the cage, she begins to come back to her senses. Tears roll down her eyes as she and the Coast Guard make their way up to the surface safely. This is where the movie ends. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.